start for real. Three seconds. Okay. That was three seconds, by the way. Oh, okay, cool. Welcome to AWIC, everyone. Right. Yeah, we're giving you the juice today. Yeah. Is that something that you say or no? No, I don't know that's if that's something say anyone anymore. says, but sure. <laughs> All right, we're giving you the juice. So sliding is something that we feel is a little bit over discussed potentially but it's also a big juicy topic and i'm pretty informed on it but it's been a bit of a busy ish week so mike you being the 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 juice master why don't you go ahead and just the keeper of the juice i have <laughs> just go ahead and uh i i have sort of inadvertently become johnny on the spot with the juice um uh, and that's as a result of the whole situation being quite fast moving and I, I literally just now had a message from someone just saying, saying thank you for the way that I've presented it, which is like I've tried to present it in a way that's not hysterical and is and is based on the actual information that we have. So, just a really quick wind back because I did three videos in a row last night um, because I just sat and recorded, released, so recorded, released because a lot of it was stuff coming was out happened. that quickly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so what's happened was. So the kind of catalyst for this whole discussion was um, Wang Yi Hang's 0.78 WR average 2 by 2 2 by 2 WR average, all right? Um, mm -hmm. In that, we could see that there was a sliding technique being used, which broke a number of regulations. That then began an investigation by the WRC, the Regulations Committee. They wanted to have a unified voice with the board. Um, uh, they then said, okay, we're going to use frame counting now. We're not going to apply it retrospectively. We're not going to apply it to Yi Hang's average. And that was the sort so they of... They said that they will use frame counting now? Because I thought that they said that they weren't going to. Going that forward... The, like, they... That's what they used to do, was not... Oh, okay. Frame but going counting. forward, they're going to use frame counting. Yeah. And, there, and there's like specific parameters too. And if, if you want to look at like every specific detail that we're pretty much kind of gliding over, um, check out the, the WCA forum. That has just so much, e even right now, and I'm sure in the next few hours, there's going to be even more stuff. So if you're looking for like every detail, head over to the forum. That's where you're going to find all the juicy bits. Okay. Yeah. Continue, Mike. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I've, I've gone over that in like word for word. I've been reading these statements and kind of analyzing them on my videos as well. So it's all there. If you don't want to read it, you can have me yap it at you as well. Um, so they are, yeah, that, that happened. And then it came out that the that there was like some some kind of tension between the board and the WRC that sparked a lot of rumor and sort of manic reaction all across the place. There were leaks of emails coming out. It was getting really messy. The board came out with a statement to say, hey, this is what happened, which I think is what we were all waiting for. We wanted to hear the board's side of how this had gone from a WRC thing to the board intervening and then more and more information has kept coming out and that kind of um that that peaked yesterday at the this petition this magna carta where people have essentially called for a vote of confidence it's essentially in the board again all of this I've gone into super detail on on in a number of videos um, to try and explain it and to try and help people, including myself, understand it. Um, so where... well, this is good because you're getting like real time practice. Because like I said, I, I understand what's happening, but I'm not, you know, I'm not following the play by play as they happen. Right. That seems to be almost a job by itself. Well, so, okay, pretty much, <laughs> yeah. Crazy. And that's what I'm saying. When I've become the Johnny on the spot, I, I, like I was out, uh, um, I was out playing Warhammer last night. Okay, that's just how cool of a guy I am. I was out playing Warhammer Kill Team because there's a new set coming out, and my phone was just going off. Like so many people are just feeding me stuff. Just talk about this, talk about this, do this, do this, and that's cool. Um, but it's it's been quite a lot, and I can only imagine how much it is for the board and for the WRC. There's a lot of people um, coming after them in a personal way, which is not cool, and we do not endorse. So how so? If that's like okay to say in this and things, I don't know what it is like coming after them personally, just like like being rude or mean online or yeah, uh, showing up at someone's door putting oh, like bags of, of poo, calling into question their like decision-making skills and stuff and 
their actual like dedication to the community, which, yeah. you know, I, I think it's more like, yeah, we are kind of concerned with, you know, the situation at hand, but I think, you know, like people are calling for board members to completely resign. And I don't think we need full on resignation from like any of them. I think what we need is, I think probably more transparency is the big one. So we, we can better understand, at least in the moment, what they're thinking, what the WRC is thinking. And I, I think we're all just kind of hoping that maybe in the future, like with as more and more things become transparent, uh, hopefully they kind of take the community like decisions into like into a, their own thoughts and kind of, you know, evaluate it, be like, OK, this is what everyone wants. Let's, you know you know, take that into our decision making process. Gotcha. Yeah. And uh, so I've been I've been talking to someone, a staff member at the WCA all morning because they they flagged something in one of my videos that I had to go in and, and change ever so slightly because um, it's a long story. It's quite boring. But anyway, I was talking to them and essentially what, what I'm feeling as as someone who is kind of involved in boards, different boards is like the and from this information I've got this morning, I feel like the WCA has expanded really fast since like 2018, 2019. Um, and it's no fault of anyone's. It's it's failed, I think, to keep up with that in expansion um, in a in an effective way. So it needs I think I think it needs a little bit of assistance, probably from an outside source in in, in a slight restructure, not restructure necessarily. But there are some things that need to be adjusted. The board is um is is too busy in my opinion with like operational stuff like really sort of basic stuff so like a reorganization then. yeah 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 that's a better word but um i think well let's we well, should it's, it's on that note though it's interesting because someone asked me um I'm trying to decide if they can be named or not some <laughs> totally one of the not. core wca people um asked me like my thoughts on compensation for people within the WCA and who should be compensated and how that would all work. And I'm still sort of working out my answer to that question. But one thing that I do find sort of interesting is, and I guess it's just on one hand, the dedication of people who love what like, cubing and they want to help it because right. I mean, there's been times where I'm not comparing what I'm about to say to like a delegate or whatever, but there's been times where we've been at a competition and I've driven six hours that morning, vended all day, talk with different people, and I'm just really tired and want to go home, but they're behind schedule, so I'll hop in and scramble or judge or run or whatever just because you want to help. Um, but I find it interesting that so many people are like dying to become delegates and just just like to volunteer like like they like are prioritizing it over certain aspects of their personal life which i find kind of cool and interesting but what i'm getting at is um at one of the competitions someone in the, the wca made a joke that they um weren't able to get jalapeno peppers on their pizza because it wasn't in the budget <laughs> for the thing and it's like and this was a pretty like key person in the WCA. So I'm just like, huh. I mean, I guess you have to draw the line somewhere. Not everybody can maybe get like a zillion toppings or whatever, but I just found it kind of funny. And it does kind of seem like that, um, yeah, maybe it is time that the WCA becomes restructured or reorganized and maybe looks at compensating some of the key people that, because you can't compensate everybody, like the no. runners, the scramblers. Right. There has to be a volunteer level to it. It is still like a grassroots thing. But yeah, I do think that maybe, you know, for the level of decisions and time going into it, maybe we'd get better results if people felt like they weren't just giving away the time for a cause and right. they were actually could look at it as like a job, quote unquote. Right. Yeah. And I think like as the WCA, because I know, you know, their whole like goal, or I shouldn't say the whole goal, but like, a big part of it is to become like an actually, you know, like an actual sport, you know, to be recognized as a sport organization. So I think as we get closer and closer to that, I think it becomes more and more of a possibility that we up? can like pay these people. Yeah. 
Might want to talk a little louder, just just to be safe. See, Jaden does this thing where he has a very soothing voice, <laughs> but the mic might not like that. It's all good. I can um, hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, no. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm not fully convinced that the WCA, well, I, I can say with certainty that the WCA as it is today is not the organization that's going to really, um, I think, propel cubing into different areas i think it's great for what we're doing now and everything but i just don't think that it has the organization which i guess is what we keep coming back to to ultimately like get involved like in like an esports type thing i just don't think that they uh are at that level but we'll see and excited for what's going to happen with that so is there anything more on the sliding stuff i feel like we kind of deviated a little bit which is always good but well no i, I mean kind of and this is this is kind of something i've been trying to keep on top of which is i don't think it's really a about this slide it's about uh this it's about the wca at an organizational level there are some issues there's nothing nothing is like fundamentally broken i don't think and there are good people with good intentions leading our organization i believe that is from my position as a non-voting member right just a regular old punter who goes to competitions um yeah i agree and I, so i guess it, like the sliding kind of lifted the hood yeah so to speak and kind of found you know a little bit oh like yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I do think that, like, in my opinion, Jaden kind of briefed me on the whole using video for the solves. And correct me if I'm quoting you incorrectly. But um, <laughs> Jaden kind of told me that, like, essentially only certain solves, like if you're within top 50 and it's, like, a record or your personal record or something, at that point they'll look at using video footage. But I guess... What I was looking to say is just that the fact that we weren't slow mowing video clips in 2024 just because when that's such an easily accessible like right. solution, I mean, I don't know, like the fact that um, didn't they say something that like if you with the sliding specifically that if you couldn't see it on camera in real time that they were going to. Yeah, that was like the original standing was that like if you couldn't see the sliding happening and uh, like uh, without slowing it down and going frame by frame, that they would just allow it because and I guess the, that's what the precedent sparks. that they set originally was that they weren't going to use frame by frame analysis. So it had to be identifiable in full speed, which to me is like I, I understand this was president uh, precedent set back a few years ago, I think in 2022. But to me, is like, if you can go frame by frame, use that to your advantage. You're getting a much more, like, you know, definitive answer that way. Well, yeah. And um, the fact that that's, it's like a magician with, like, sleight of hand. Like, if, if sliding is something that people are, like, training to do, which, uh, you know, young Yihang, right, is pretty good at it. It's like, I mean, I don't know. You kind of have to slow-mo to that point. And, um... Didn't, I mean, I'm trying to remember, but with uh, the 3.47, the Yu Shang Du um, world record, I know there was lots of issues with that possibly not counting, and they were having to use surveillance footage. So what's the deal with that? That kind of, from what I'm remembering, feels like a contradiction. Yeah. I know when the 3.47 happened, that was like right in my like like gap years of cubing. So I remember coming back and, and like trying to keep up with all the the like drama about it. I know there was a lot of like people questioning the validity of it because it was in China. And I believe the way they like either organize their competitions or the way they like post results is different than how like everyone else mm. does it in the world. Interesting. So I remember a lot of people were kind of like questioning things and being like, is this actually valid or what? There was no video footage. And then eventually they found the surveillance uh, video from the venue. Yeah. But do you remember anything on that, Mike? About the three forty seven? No, not really. I just remember that okay. there was there it was um in people were just like, show us the footage, where's the video? How can someone be this good and not be recording? Yeah, well I guess that uh yeah, my old mind. I mean that's the thing is sometimes I feel like I deal with so much stuff on a routine basis is like so, sometimes the details uh, escape me at times yeah, but i hear you so i don't know it'll be interesting to see what happens with all the sliding stuff and hopefully it'll lead it sounds like it's going in that direction to hopefully a net positive it's a, it's a big thing that's going to have probably some pretty big changes and i think it's you know one of those things where 
we, we found a pretty big issue that we didn't realize we had before and we're finally addressing it and everything is happening all at once so it seems really really big and it is to a certain extent but i think this is going to be probably a major turning point in how these issues are resolved how we can take steps to avoid issues like this in the future so yeah i think overall we're just going to get end up with a better set of rules a better organization and hopefully the majority of people being happy well between happens. the sliding and the logo for blind Pretty excited. I'm I'm a firm believer. I don't think I've gotten to give my way in that. As far as a logo on a UV coated cube, I mean the sticker. I could see that because if the sticker's frayed, I mean I could see just it being easier to say that no logo sticker, just because that way well, you don't have to worry about okay, well is it worn out and there's an edge peeling up or a corner. I mean, um, but with a UV coated logo, you could maybe feel it, and it could possibly vary by manufacturer. But the caveat to saying you can feel it is the amount of you're gonna have to like be sitting there feeling for it and in my perspective if somebody wants to risk sacrificing time i mean i guess like if they have an orientation like i would always solve white top green front you just kind of feel for it but like i don't know i feel like at the world class level no one's gonna have time to do that anyway right. and i feel like if somebody wants to to try to do that to improve their time and they're not really world class right well yeah, even even if you're you know where i'm at you know i average like just under two and a half minutes you know me sitting there trying to feel a uv logo is, yeah i is, mean it's gonna even at me averaging just under two minutes and 30 seconds that's like you know that's still gonna take a lot of time for me to do <laughs> and i'm just gonna get a bad time in general yeah, so like I, I feel like if you're at the point where you're having to try to locate the white center, like you've already made a mistake anyway. The solve's already probably pretty bad, right? And you're yeah, I don't, I don't, and, I don't and think, I think it's, it's gonna be. It should be more of a convenience thing, like like with the the clock pin regulation change. Yeah. It was more of a convenience thing upon uh, for like the um, organizers and delegates and stuff to make it so they didn't have to hand out a bunch of extras all the time. So I think in the same sense, it's like it makes it easier since these manufacturers don't always uh, like include a blank center cap, which means you would have to go out and buy a blank center cap separately from the cube you have. Yeah. Which, you know, isn't that big of like an issue, but you know, we could just solve that problem by saying if it's UV, you know, it's fine. Sure. All right. Well, you want to talk about some, uh, Hardware stuff, Mike. I feel like that's your favorite one of them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's Is that a fair good, to say. That's a good segue into some hardware. Um, so, well, there's it's we've we've had a lot of things um released. We've had a big dump from Moyu, as it were. We've got the um the Aozu and the Aoshuang are now out, and you, we've all uh, I've got them on pre order. I don't have them yet. They're on their way. You've got the um, you've got everything except the Gan fifteen. Hey, because that's that's not quite ready yet it's on pre-order but it's take it's gonna be later in october hey yeah it got pushed back i think originally we were expecting the gan 15 to be arriving around october 10th but right now there's the golden week holiday in china so it i think makes sense that they're pushing it back it's just odd though that the frosted version is being pushed back and it's also strange that the the, the marketing materials called out that the squared off centerpieces are only for the first batch, which makes me think, okay, maybe that was how they were originally going to make the cubes, I manufacture so. all these squared off center pieces. Right. Decided, oh no, this could be bad for some. So let's just, instead of throwing them away, chuck them in the cubes until they're gone. Because <laughs> yeah, it's feel... interesting because all the game cubes before that used round off corners on their center pieces. So then they added the ones for the 15 that were like squared off. And to me, I don't know if it's like a placebo thing, but to me, the squared off ones make it feel more stable, but it catches more often. Yeah, that Whereas is your big with the, thing. the rounded ones, they feel, uh, it makes a cube feel slightly less stable, but catches less often. Yeah. What so, were you going to say, Mike? I was going to say, uh, to me, it just feels like exactly what you've said. Like they had all these, they, they did the squared off <laughs> ones. They realized they weren't very good. So they did the rounded ones. And then they were just like, well, are we going to throw these in the bin or should we just, <laughs> here you go. You can have them. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's interesting, too, because I guess now, like, the MGC, there's, like, a secondary pack. Remember what I showed you a few AWICs ago where 
there's like the extra centerpieces and stuff. I guess that's being sold separately now, which for the EST, I just really hate. Yeah, yeah. the EST. I just really hate that manufacturers do all these separate things where it's like, it just makes it a pain to have to bundle them all together, creates confusion. Like, I know that, you know, it's just one more thing to keep track of. Like, okay, I have to remove that product image that shows the squared off centerpiece. And if I don't, someone could be angry. Then there's going to be questions about, oh, well, am I still in the first batch? I don't know. Are you in the first batch still? I don't really want to go open them all up and find out. So it's just, I don't know. Like, cubing is such a weird thing because... There's just so many levels to it that are just a pain to deal with and work around where like other industries just are so much more ironed out. Like, you know, Mike, you can maybe appreciate this. I know you commented, uh, was it the Tornado V4 that, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Tornado V4 that, that we listed for sale when you commented that you saw it was posted. It's just like, I love the fact that all these manufacturers, they don't make all this marketing material in a matter of hours, they have it. It's prepared. Like, I wish they could just send all the stores, hey, here's all of your marketing materials. Here's the price. Here's the release date. If you dare release a pre order before this time in this time zone on this date, you're not going to get your cube. So don't even try it. Yeah. It would be so much yeah. better than just a free for all of like, okay, here's all your stuff. Here's the pictures. We don't have the price, or here's the cost price. We don't have an MSRP. But then, oh, no, you listed it for too low of a price. So we need you to actually go ahead and adjust that. Or or you listed it too high. You need to lower it down. It's just like, again, I don't know why these things can't be. Well, they can be. I don't know why these things aren't being done. Do you have any thoughts on that, Mike? Um, yeah, I think I I think I, I know you're going to agree with me. I, th- I know you are, yeah, right, I obviously. I don't disagree with you. It would make life simpler for us as people who have to create listings and images and pricing and all that stuff because i had the um i had pricing for the gan 15 um but i didn't have product images and then there was the oh it's coming out on the 15th um information which i'm not sure is valid anymore you reckon it might be the 10th um and then before you um and some other big stores uh had your pre-orders up i basically had all the information and i was like I don't want to go first. I don't want to be the yeah. first because I'm so tiny. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be first with this pre-order because also I um I just look, you know, I thought it was going to be a bit more expensive than it was just based on my um, yeah. my sums. And I was like, yeah, I had that opportunity at this release to be the first with the pre-order globally. And I went, I'm not doing that. No way. Because if I have to change anything. Well, or I think you anything, and I might have been in the same boat because I had some, I had everything ready to go. Before the pre-order went up, not by a huge lead time, no. but I think I had it like 24 hours or so, give or take. I don't remember exactly. But yeah, I kind of, it's, that's the thing is, again, there's so much, it's so vague as far as like time zones. And can you do the pre-order once the clock hits this day in China? Or is that in the US or like whatever time zone you operate in? So, you know, one could assume it would be China. But I've also learned you can't make assumptions. So no. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. And um, yeah, I don't know. Luckily, I stay up weird hours. So it just is like, oh, it's time. Okay, let me just get off the couch and go listen at 3 a.m. really quick, casually. So um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's definitely weird. But um, one thing that's interesting is, so because you actually called this out a few a weeks ago. So it's worth kind of just Did I? circling back that... Oh, well, no, no, no. You called out the fact that you didn't think that I could release content on that function 3x3. Three three. Oh, um, true, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I can. Like, this went through their marketing and was approved. Well, turns out you were right. Yeah. Uh, people noticed that that was pulled down, and it was just was a, like, legitimate misunderstanding. Like, I mean, I don't know. There wasn't any ill feelings on either side. But, yeah, apparently now we can release the cube but not show the mech or the adjustment system. But even then, it's funny how, like, I typically abide quickly. And like, hey, can you pull this down? And no exaggeration, within three minutes, the video was pulled offline. Mm. But I did notice, and you actually pointed out too, Mike, there's a few There's a few other, I think like one or two other lingering videos that were up for a fair bit longer than they should have been. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting that, um, 
I don't know if they're... Because I was told that the reason it had to be removed was that it messes with their marketing plan. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. And that makes me just wonder, like... How does that mess with their marketing plan? Like, do they just want to be the ones to view it and create a buzz? But then again, that's what we were kind of doing. Mm. Right. Um, I doubt that the mech is going to have any substantial changes when it's that developed at that point. Right. Um, so I don't know. But we'll see. No hard feelings. Fanction, if you're watching this, still love you guys. Excited for the cube. Yeah. But yeah, yeah My, it's just kind of like... Yeah. My perspective on that one was, yeah, because when, when we talked about it, we hadn't talked about it until we were recording. And I, cause I, <laughs> and I wasn't told by the manufacturer because I didn't make a, I made a reaction video on someone else's content. Um, so I didn't have any contact with the manufacturer at all. And it was someone else from another store who had got in touch with me and said, oh, hey, actually, we've been told not to publish on this. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. But then when I talked to you on camera, you were like, well, no, I'm in touch with the store. And they said, it's fine. And I was like, all right, well, I guess that overrides my rumor that I've heard, essentially. But then as it turns out, yeah, it was a it was a bit messy. And it's continuing to be messy now that you can show the cube, but not anything inside it. What is that? Like, that's, that's nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's interesting too, and this isn't a call out to Fangshin specifically, but it's weird that this is a new thing for 2024 that we're having to screen videos through the manufacturer for new releases in some cases. Mm. Um, I don't particularly have a problem with it just because I can understand from their perspective, they want to make sure that we're not spreading misinformation unintentionally right. or if there was a misunderstanding My or whatever. like... If I were, you know, making a video on something, my, I'm sure they're starting off with good intentions. Their idea is, you know, we don't want you to say something wrong about it. You know, we want you, everything to be accurate. But at the same time, it's like, will this eventually develop into them possibly being like, if we were to say, yeah, this cube has like this issue, are they going to be like, take that out of the video? Like, don't talk about that? Because then that becomes a problem. Well, which, as of right now, I don't think any of them have said anything but also their cubes have been good so yeah i mean i'm also i subscribe to the whole if you don't have something nice to say don't say it at all doesn't mean that you withhold information from the community and you know because i feel like if you almost just don't say something about a new release you could be implying that it's good in some cases right but i subscribe to the practice of if there's a problem like with the gan 15 there were a few quirks and you know you let them know, we try to work it out, give our feedback, let them have an opportunity right. to, to, I don't even want to say correct it because that would mean that our opinion is always the right opinion. Right. But just give them a heads up first and then we'll let them put the ball into their court before you just shred something to bits on a video right. or whatever. Because, you know, you don't want to, like, there, there, there is a difference between being like, oh, this cube has, you know, like an actual, like, manufacturing issue and then being like, Oh, well, I don't like the cube, so I'm just going to, you know, talk bad about it. So, like, there's an actual difference, and I think that is kind of what they're trying to, you know, make sure that we all avoid. And yeah. I think it's starting out that way, and I hope it stays that way. But uh, I I worry, you know, that there is a slight chance that it could get to a point where it's like, if we say anything that's, like, criticism, they could be like, don't put that in the video. But again, they, they haven't done that so far. There hasn't really been any issues yeah, really well, I feel like, about. too, that the difference is, like, as a store owner, our reviews are always very transparent, but there's a different dynamic there, whereas if I'm just some random Joe Schmo who's getting a hold of a, well, I guess a Joe Schmo wouldn't get a sample, so it's kind of irrelevant. Well, let's say, like, a final production cube that just hates it. Different dynamic. I mean, you can't really, you can never control, like, what the public says about something, but right. I feel like it just comes off a little differently if we just, as a store shredded something put it through the ringer it, without giving them our thoughts at least or right. letting them know that hey we don't really like it for these reasons but right anyway yeah, yeah. um i mean wow. uh, just to just to pull back the curtain a little bit on that um the 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 situation that you're in in particular um i don't get as much junk mail from manufacturers as you guys do but you literally just get cubes arrive with no supporting material no email no notice that they're arriving so, like, Sometimes, what are you going to do yeah. with that? Yeah. Yeah, and so we were talking about... I don't even remember what the name is. What's the name of that new 3x3 that we're looking at, Mike? Oh, the, the, the Huameng. Huameng 
yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the more you, yeah, the YS, yeah. So there's a very strong chance that that is on the way to us, and right. I have no idea. It just stuff just shows up. Like very rarely do we get a heads up. Hey, sent you a sample. Here's what's different about it. Here's right. the highlight key points. It's just like cube here. Take cube. cube. Can I share with you one observation that I have already of the Huameng TG just from the videos that I've seen? It's got, and yeah, I don't know if either of you have do. seen it yet. It's got a very interesting manual adjustment system with a little handle. A I little saw your picture. Handle that pops up. That looks very familiar. Yeah. 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 I wonder where we've all seen that before. And that, that does <laughs> remind me, it was probably about a year ago now, but. Uh, one of the, like, the leaked patents from MoYu was an adjustment system that had like a handle like that. Now, obviously, this was a, quote, leak, so I don't know if it was actually from MoYu or not, but that was the claim, yeah. was that this is a uh, patent that MoYu had registered, and it had a handle like that for like manual adjustment without using any sort yeah. of tool. So it kind of reminded me of that, looking at that well, picture. Well, I mean, like, mm. look... Aside from just straight up violating somebody's patent, um, I think that we're getting to a point with the cubing hardware to where there's probably not a whole lot of novel new ideas currently. So I don't think it's un unreasonable for adjustment systems or things of that nature to sort of look similar to one another right. at this point in time. It doesn't mean that they shouldn't try to keep innovating, but I mean, I personally am a huge fan of the little lunchbox handle flip up no tool needed approach. I know some yeah. people had issues with it breaking, and from my understanding, if it does break off, you're kind of just yeah. In, I will say um, with the with the V4s, you know, I've been trying out a lot of different settings, and I've had no issues with the handle so far on either the yeah. flagship or the Pioneer. So there is a good chance that they might have fixed it or somehow reinforced it. But as of right now, we've had it for a, a few weeks or maybe even a month or two, and like no issues so far. Yeah. So I like the handle. Yeah. No, I don't. But yeah, it'll it. be interesting. Like the YS3, I feel like kind of just got eclipsed. It had its like brief time in the sun and just sort of just, I don't hear anybody ask us about the YS3 anymore at this point in time. Yeah. No, sales of it just kind of dropped off and then I just quietly discontinued it and nobody said a word. <laughs> you know what's funny <laughs> too? Um, Mofang Jiaoshi in the whole cubing classroom thing. That just mm -hmm. silently died and just like, and luckily I saw the writing on the wall and like change the listings to say Moyu. So there's less confusion, but yeah, that whole Mofang Jiaoshi is now more so, I guess, just for like, for a period of time, it went from like being speed cubes as well to just twisty puzzle stuff and then just kind of died. So yeah. I feel like they still put yeah. the, the, the Mofang Jiaoshi logo on like um the RS3M and the Maylongs. So yeah. it seems like that's like, could be interpreted as like their budget line. Well, it's funny though, because even the item numbers indicate a Moyu prefix. So mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know, it's instead of the Moifang Jiaoshi prefix. So right. it's interesting that I feel like sometimes all these different little sub brands and stuff, it's like, it's really weird. Um, yeah, like I was, uh, I don't know, it's funny because I guess that sometimes you don't even know, like some keepers wouldn't even know that the Huameng is actually like a Moyu branch, I guess, or sub-brand. Yeah. And I guess how important is that to to a lot of people? I don't know. Because like... Well, that's what I'm thinking. Do you think it... Is it, is it a good thing? Because you would think that Moyu has credibility, so you, like that would help bolster the Huameng brand. Or do you think they want to try to make it stand on its own? Well, that's the question. I mean, I always listed it with Moyu, I'm fairly sure, in the title because I wanted people to know exactly what you've said. I wanted them to know that it wasn't just some brand new brand because brand new, brand new brands don't do well historically in New Zealand. People respond much better to a cube from an established brand. Like I've, I've had trouble with um, uh, more try. And I'm trying to mm. think. I didn't even. I didn't go near the dolphin cube because I was like, no one's gonna buy it. Oh. Not over, not over here. Can we just say with more try? That's such a sad. I mean, now they have the the X3 Plus, but that was sad because the more try cube was good. Yeah. Um, I didn't care for all the different versions, which I think people know pretty 
much by now that I just despise multiple versions of the same cube yeah. in most yeah. cases. Um, but yeah, that cube was doing really well and they just could not get a manufactured. And I think that just killed all of the momentum that brand had. Yeah. And um, it's really unfortunate because I like it and want to support them. But yeah, that just... I don't know, the reception and excitement around the X3 Plus, which granted is just a, a plus version right. with more minor tweaks, isn't really, it's not selling as well as the more tries were back in the day when they first were kind of coming out. So yeah, just a, I guess, good lesson example of uh, yeah, having I didn't realize to they uh, had... make sure you have all your ducks in a row. I didn't realize they had manufacturing issues. And there was another one, MS Cube. I, um, I'm oh, not yeah. sure MSQ. what's going on with that. I can't even remember. Were they? I think they were the Dianxing subbrand. I really have a oh, hard they, time. They keeping... became a Dianxing subbrand. Yeah, yeah, I have a really right. hard time keeping track of all of these. Just again, off the off the cuff. But yeah, MS Cube. I mean, I think they had some optimism starting out. People were optimistic about it, but then yeah. just. I will tell you, as they continue to release more, like the MS Three X, the I think the L came before the X. Yeah, those just do not yeah. sell. And, and then they released uh, their most recent 3x3, I believe, the MS3R. Which yeah, was, oh yeah. Front. Which people, the, the the thing with that cube is that even on the tightest setting, it was way too loose and flexible. And it was weird because I remember when we got the samples in, the samples were tighter. Like they felt tighter than the actual final release, which was really yeah, strange. Yeah, remember that. And then the price was just... I think too high for people to justify it. Yeah, I think that's where these new manufacturers miss is I feel like they come out with the most radical designs like we're seeing with that new Function Cube. Um, but the price point is not something that most people are willing to gamble on. Right, especially when they're not familiar with either the brand or you know the features that they're including with yeah. the Cube. Like I don't know, rolling the dice on a $28 speed cube that is from a brand that you don't really typically uh you know isn't known for like making three by threes for example it's a lot of money yeah mm. yeah i was just looking at the one that um the the ms cube that was the ms 3x that i looked at when i was doing videos over on boomer cuber for a while um which was like a test channel but um that was the one that had just the most ridiculous part set up it was just like you open the box and it was just like a cube and then a hundred bits like around it and it was just just looking yeah. at it i was like absolutely not absolutely not there must be one of them and that must have been the one there was one from ms cube that i opened it popped the cap off and it was just like uh yeah no <laughs> like Peace. i'm gonna I'm need out. like six more cups of coffee for that <laughs> and yeah i mean I don't know. Uh, you know what's funny, though, is how it's just a prime example of how people get sort of conditioned to certain things. Um, <laughs> when I was, well, okay, YOLO. When I was working on the Function 3x3 cube and trying to adjust it, Jaden and I found that it was pretty loose. Um, and we were getting a little bit of like corner twisting, which is being addressed, by the way. So it is mm -hmm. being addressed. But I, I was just tightening it using the compression system. And I'm just like, man, I cannot get this thing any tighter. I'm so accustomed to not whipping out a screwdriver and like tightening a screw on these flagship <laughs> cubes. I didn't even think, I, I just totally glazed over the fact that, oh, there's a screw there that I could actually tighten too, <laughs> which is like, it's embarrassing to say that, but like, I'm just I think, like, I'm so used to like, okay, dual adjustment. You got your presets, which right. yeah, it's just, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I like that direction, but I do think that we kind of lose a bit of the novelty of like when we would train people to service like our cosmic supernovas, those setup services, it's tensioning is an art form. Yeah. And, you know, I like I will YOLO. I'll take I'll take <laughs> pride in saying that Max Park made the comment, Wow, this cube is actually really even or Jaden he said to Jaden, so I don't want to misquote him. But Essentially, to the effect that, like, wow, you tension your cubes really evenly. It's like, thanks, Max. Yes, we do. <laughs> and that, that takes lots of uh, takes lots of training. And because you know, when you came out with those tools at one point, do you remember those, Mike? And maybe you, Jaden, where it was like um, two sticks that you would, oh, you would wedge yeah. up in between oh the center God. piece. Like, with the, uh, I think they came with the WRM. Uh, 
if the, we want to, if, if we want to take this all the way back, they sold with the the GTS V1, I think, a straight up like box where you can buy the tensioning kit. They were red and blue. <laughs> We've got to find a picture to throw that up on screen somewhere. Yes. I'm sure the editor or someone will forget. But um, yeah, like that was terrible because it was purely off of like, okay, I'm tightening it. We've made contact. I think that's the same level of tightness as the other sides, and it just did not work. Like you would spend so much more time trying to get that even than just learning how to make a cube even. But I would spend literally weeks training people to do these setup services. And so now that you can just whip out your tool and set the clicks evenly, definitely makes that part of the job easier. But mm -hmm. yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see if good old tensioning actually gets phased out entirely. Yeah. Yeah, we shall see. Hey, um, we are 40 minutes in. Do we want to think about wrapping up? Is there anything pressing that you need to talk about before we, we, we wrap this one up? You can talk about your favorite holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Halloween stuff. I mean, 35% off at the time of filming. So, you know, we, you know, I'll just say right now, you know what really annoys me, Mike? Tell me, too, me. You yes, really let's annoys go, me. let's go. What annoys you? What grinds your gears? Tell us, Ken. Oh, man, it, it grinds all six of them. <laughs> I drive a stick like a man. Um, <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> um, Shots fired. Yeah, when I, when I list Halloween items, like, early September, or Christmas items in, like, November, and I, there's always those comments. Bro, it's not even October yet. Why are you listing Halloween stuff? It's like, do you not understand the concept that like you need time to buy the, the the widget, whether it's the cube or the bag or the mat, and enjoy it leading up to the holiday? Like you don't order it the week of Halloween and be like, oh yeah, that was cool for a day, and just <laughs> and novelty also, you is know, over. You, you risk it uh, going out of stock. Yeah, and well. it's like, look at the big box stores. Like I walk into a Costco, it's August, they have Christmas stuff out, yeah. and I'm just like. Where are you guys <laughs> now with with your comments? So that's what grinds my gears. I'm excited about the Halloween stuff. I'm possibly transitioning to becoming more of a Christmas guy. Don't really know why. Whoa, that's big. Okay. Think, yeah, it is. I'm just kind of sad because Veronica and I are enthusiasts of the 12 foot skeletons you can get from Home Depot, which when we first got into those, it was a coveted thing where like people were scalping them and you could not just find them. Home Depot has since in the recent like last two years finally caught up on the supply so not as exclusive but yeah we like since moving to las vegas it's different terrain out here it's like lots of rocks so you don't see like really grass in neighborhoods whereas in california we had grass so you could just stake them up in the front yard and they look really cool but here we have like hills and rocks and i'm like yeah this thing is not able to be <laughs> set up so i think that just the lack of being able to decorate is kind of a little saddening so yeah. just kind of gradually segueing to christmas possibly but yeah. we'll see <laughs> i know you were disappointed that we couldn't get uh the the skeleton to fit inside the warehouse yeah yeah we tried to have him <laughs> in the warehouse as like the, the head supervisor but <laughs> his head couldn't fit yeah. so that was kind of a bit of a bummer also but uh and, and it blew over during that insane windstorm in 2022 yeah. so that yeah. was kind of saddening also but yeah, Halloween stuff was cool. I uh, went down to Spin Master slash Rubik's last week. True. That was cool to see their uh, their facility and seeing what they have on the horizon. Um, we weren't able to take pictures, but I can say that it's funny that like they have a cube coming out um, that uh, err on the side of safety and not possibly leak it. But essentially... Dang it. They thought that they invented something or bought the design from an inventor who thought that he invented this. And Moyu you did the same exact thing like years ago. Oh. So it's interesting how, and same thing with their little Christmas tree. You know how how Moyu, how Rubik's has the little Christmas tree three by two by one? Yeah. Three, three by two by one? No, yeah. three, three, three by one. Um, three by two no, by no, one. Yeah, yeah, three yeah. by two by one or one yeah, by three two by, by three. by one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, three, <laughs> yeah. Um, I made I made a comment like oh it's it's funny that that's the one thing that Rubik's like took from the Chinese puzzle designers like yunk and and they're like oh no like we paid someone like for this design and I'm just like oh huh. it's a little awkward did you not know this has been made in China for like 
several years. <laughs> I don't. I think that the China's ones predate the Rubik's ones. I don't know that to be for sure, but I will say that uh, Rubik's is making some moves and they're trying to integrate a lot more with the speed keeping community, which is cool, but may change the landscape a little bit. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting. And I'm just really surprised that the Rubik's speed cube is getting such a positive reception. Like, even though people know it's a Swift Block 355S that's repackaged and possibly marked up, and people will start buying it because of the novelty. And mm -hmm. that's really interesting to me. Because I feel like most people, like, wouldn't do that but i guess because it has the rubik's logo on it it's a cool yeah. i'd say cool collector's thing but even some people are just straight up using it so it's really interesting yeah and it was also interesting that there are some people who don't know that it's a swift block and you'll have people who you know will be like oh man the swift block like really is not that good and then some of those That's same people favorite. some of those same people will get the rubik speed and they're like wow this is like actually kind of good and it's like <laughs> i did see like, i did see a comment of somebody who i guess saw chatter that the rubik's speed cube is the swift block and maybe just glazed over it and misunderstood it and thought that they were being compared and he's like yeah i have them both and i like the rubik's one way more it's way better he didn't even just say he likes it more he went into the whole performance and i'm like ah oh, buddy like, it's like they're the womp. same thing <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> But I don't know. I think that's a good stopping point. It's easy to stretch these things out. Um, they're they're fun. So this is our first triple A wick. Yeah. Coming at Ooh. you from. Well, no, no, we did one with Garrett. Oh, okay, that is true. Which is now actually really funny. This is our not only our second triple A wick, but our second triple A wick with a cube store owner. That is true. Well, there you go. Didn't you? You did so. one with Soup Timmy as well, didn't you? Yeah, but he's oh. not a cube. Man, yeah, but we did. Wow, wow dude. <laughs> yeah, wow. Man, yeah, time does go by. Okay, just forget <laughs> I said any of that. This is not a special AWIC then. Um, no, nothing but to yeah, see here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah, it's all fun. I like when Mike wraps it up. So, Mike, do us, do us the honor. Okay, cool. Well, first of all, I'm going to make a pitch. If you're getting into Christmas stuff, I think um, Christmas scented lubes, I can totally get behind. Like, that sounds pretty good. You know, like mulled wine, kind of all that kind of Christmas vibe. Well, we do that. Cake. You know that, right? You do a Chris. I didn't know that. Yeah, peppermint scented, man. Oh, peppermint. Well, yeah, okay, okay. Candy canes, sure. Peppermint. It's our is, candy cane loop. Yeah, yeah, we call it candy cane. I'll send you a bottle. Okay, okay. I would I would love like a Christmas cake or something like that, like some rich Christmas wintery flavor. That'd be good. Cool. Like anyway. Eggnog. I will say we are exploring a Max Park Korean barbecue lube. We're, we're going into some weird rabbit holes. Korean in, in the barbecue. Dude, now I'm okay. just hungry. That sounds good right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so, ready for uh, that. <laughs> yeah, but all right, sign us out, Mike. Yeah, sorry. Thank you so much for watching another week in cubing, everyone. We will catch you at approximately the same time next week, maybe. <laughs> Is it another week in cubing or another a week in cubing? Another a week. All right, another a week in cubing. <laughs> Well, another week in cubing kind of it, it rolled off the tongue nicely. Maybe that'll be the new name. Just another week in cubing. Another week in cubing. I don't hate it. <laughs> like, oh man, it's it. another week in cubing. <laughs> but all right, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Take care. <laughs>